Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lorraine Jenkins. Uh, we welcome you all to our first hybrid in-person and in-person event. Uh, this is the first time we've been in person in over two years. So we thank you all for sharing your lunchtime with us. And we hope you engage and have a great time. I'm now going to bring up Alicia Pendleton to introduce our speaker for today. Okay, hello everyone. Glad to see everyone here. I don't wanna turn my back on everyone and glad to see you all out there in internet lane. My job today is to introduce the speaker. Um, I am here to introduce Tamara Causley Robinson who is a certified personal executive leadership development coach, a consultant, motivational speaker, mentor, and a former blog talk radio host. Her mission, which I absolutely love, her mission is to create a massive movement of professionals, especially driven or driven individuals who are inspired and empowered to rediscover their voice have the audacity to make courageous choices and boldly take cha um, charge of their lives and careers without apology, guilt, or shame. Now, the CEO and founder of Causley Robinson Associates, LLC, Samara, has 25 plus years of corporate experience, 20 of which were with the Price um, Waterhouse Corporation, PwC, LLC, as a leader in the information technology support organization. She has extensive customer service, project management, and human resources exposure, which includes experience as a diversity leader, executive leadership coach for emerging global leaders, and personal development coach for senior associates. I would like to present Ms. Tamara Foley Robinson. <laughs> We should have just started with that, right? What was I thinking with that bio? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, my back is going to be to you, and I am so sorry. Um, but uh, thank you for your warm welcome. Thank you for your, your heartfelt introduction. Um, and thank you for being here and sharing your lunchtime with me. I know that it is precious time, precious time. Uh, but I promise you uh, that you're in for a treat, and I'm so interested in sharing myself with you as well as receiving from you all as well. So I like to talk to people, and I like when people talk back to me. I know that the folks who are online, you're going to put things in the chat. So I have a friend of mine on the other side. What's her name again? Regina. So Regina is going to take your comments. And Regina, every now and again, I'll call on you to say, hey, what are they saying? Um, some, yes? All right. All right. So Edith is monitoring the discussion and she's going to be your, your spokesperson. Thank you so much, Edith. Thank you very much. So today, stories of success. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. Five strategies for success at work and in life. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about my journey. And I'm certain that there's gonna be quite a bit that you all will be able to identify with. Um, and again, we're gonna to learn together. All right. So you heard, and what is your name again, my dear? Alicia. So Alicia was uh, describing my my background, a little bit of my background. And a lot of times in a bio, you hear all of these things, all of this stuff, right? And everyone is like, oh, wow, look at all that she did, right? And I often, I don't lament them. I love that. It was my life. It is my life. And I often see those highlights as the top of a mountain. Those are the things that you see from far away and we can see all of what happened. But what we don't always realize that the work and the journey is in the valley. All of the work you do, all of the classes you take, 
all of the tough times that you feel like you have, all of the things that you think the people aren't seeing is happening in the valley, right? And so what do we do most of the time when we're in a valley experience, so to speak? You can talk to me. What do you, what do you think? And you can put it in the chat. What happens when we're in the valley experience most of the time? We're in the struggle. Right. And we don't see. Get talking to the mic so they can hear you. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then hit that button again. Perfect. Thank you. You're right. You see all of what somebody else did. You see what you're doing. You're comparing yourself to all of those other people. And most of the time you're feeling bad about the things that you're doing. I must not be, I don't know, fill in the blank, good enough, smart enough, uh, I don't know, skinny enough, you know, pretty enough. Hair ain't straight enough. That's my bad English. I, I really, it's going to be bad English day today a little bit because that's who I am. But the thing about it is, is that what I found in my journey that I have had much of the same experiences, right? Yes. So what's the chat saying? Yeah. So the chat is saying um, you stress out and don't see anything when you're in the valley. Or you put your head down and focus on just getting through it. Mm -hmm. You put your head down and get through it. Yes, indeed. Thank you for reminding me. So you got to continue to do that for me. But you're right. We just work harder and harder and harder and harder. And we keep going and going and going and going. And yeah, we're going to get there. But in what shape are we going to be when we get to wherever it is that we're going? What are we going to look like? We hope that we look at, you know, I don't want to look 20 years older because of what I was doing, right? It was just in a year or two. And so very much the same for me. Yes, I've worked um, in corporate for 25 plus years. Yes, I've been in large corporations doing amazing work. I was in technology before technology was a thing, right? I was always one of a few women in the room, always the woman of color in the room. And when I got my, when I fought for, let's be clear, and overproved myself for the final, what I now know is the final time I got a big um, promotion in my role, you know, someone says, oh, it's because I said, no, I worked hard. <laughs> Let's be clear. Nobody gave me anything, but people did support me, right? So we're going to talk about five strategies that now that I'm on the, in the backseat to that part of my life, and in the front seat to my current life, I can see that all the things that I was doing in the valley was really serving me. I just didn't see it. I didn't see it. So I had to repurpose it. I had to reposition it. And I'm hoping that you all can just take something from today that will be a, an amazing takeaway for you, that you don't have to hate being in the valley. You just have to you know, not that you have to, I'm encouraging you to pay attention to what's going on in the valley because in those experiences is the gift that you are. So the five strategies, the first one I wanna share with you is discover for yourself. So we talk about comparing ourselves to others. Oh, I want this. I want that. And I want, and it's okay to want, right? It's good that other people have 
achieve the things that they've achieved and they have their own way of getting to what it is that they've achieved. They have their way. There is a way but everyone has their own life to live and their own way of getting there. So take some time to sit and discover what's good for you. My discovery often looked like taking jobs that seemingly didn't make any sense. Seemingly like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? I'm like, I just wanna know. I just wanna know. Right. I was a hustler, still am. <laughs> just hustle in a different way. But um, I would just do different jobs because I felt like if I had another little piece of this puzzle, I can kind of put the puzzle together. And people would ask me, well, what puzzle is it that you're putting together? I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly, but I know that it's a piece of the puzzle. So discovering for yourself what's good. And so the other thing is you got to be able to put yourself in situations that you would, so that you, be, you can see the possibilities and the opportunities, right? Most of the times that's when we're most uncomfortable being a place that you can see something different, right? Um, do what you can to embrace that because that is part of where the gold is. Right now, you probably would not be, believe me if I told you, I was the quiet one, the shy one, and the one afraid of standing in front of people and talking. I, I, I am. I have my moments. You can learn anything. Toastmasters is an amazing thing. Get in there and be in that loving, safe environment, and they will help you do things better. But I was the quiet one. So when you were nervous earlier, you remind me of me. And I said, just breathe. We're just going to breathe. We're here, right? Hands cold, body hot. That's what's going on with me right now. So we share it, right? We embrace it. Absolutely. I just posted in the chat. Um, and so I just like regularly. Right, right. It's like, oh no. Oh no. It's like, oh no, yes. Do it, do it, do it. Right. So discover for yourself. So the next thing I want to share with you um, is this winding road. Does this resonate with anyone? It says, sometimes I have to remind myself that I don't have to do what everyone else is doing. Remind yourself, you don't have to do it their way. You do it your way. It's your journey. That's what makes you unique. And who's to say that other people aren't watching you because they want to emulate how you're doing it, right? You don't have to do it anybody else's way but your way. Right. So one of the things when I look back over my life, one of the things that's most important to me and dear to me is knowing that I don't have to do it alone. We are not meant to do anything alone. Most women, I got it. I got this, I got that, I got this and that, I got this, this, this and that. I'm going to do all of that. And then if you ask me to do one more thing, I'm going to tell you I can do that too. Right? No. No. Stop saying yes. Stop saying yes to everything. Right? I work with a lot of clients and I'm like, okay, no. That, that's, a, that's a sentence. We talk about that. But things, but community is an amazing thing, right? Doing things in community has always been one of the foundational things that I have learned to enjoy and crave and create, right? Lorraine and I were talking in our corner about 
she's in a, in a group, I'm in a group, I'm, I'm in like three groups. And it's around women supporting women, women supporting community, that's a thing. So when you know that that's something for you, your opportunities can be in that community, but look for the opportunity to do things in community. Listen, listen deeply. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to yourself and listen to others. I can actually say, I can count almost on two hands, the number of times that a stranger or someone that I have met through someone else has said something to me and I believed them. And that was the best thing I could have ever done, right? I was positioned to do a thing and someone points it out and says, X. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay. So for example, a lot of people ask, how did you come to coaching after being in corporate for 25 years, right? That makes, well, for most people, that doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense, right? And I was in technology and I was doing project team, I was managing large teams, people. I was really, really good at it. And at the same time, people were coming to me, Tamara, how did you make that move from here to there? How did you do this to that? I started as a help desk assistant, a help desk assistant in 1995. I graduated college in 1990. In 1990, between 1990 and 1995, I had four jobs in five years. I was a millennial before I knew it. <laughs> My mother was like, why do you keep moving? I said, mommy, I got to find an organization that can hold my interest. I can't be bored. I just got to get to something bigger. And I interviewed and got a job that I knew I would do very, very well. And I was recommended by someone who turned me down for a job. Who knew, right? I was trying to, I was get, trying my best to get into Price Waterhouse. I interviewed to be a trainer. Do I have training experience? No, but I know these things. She turned down asked her if we could stay in touch. We stayed in touch. And my interview basically went on and on for a year without me knowing. She made a move. Her name is Audrey. So if Audrey, if you're out there, thank you. Her name is Audrey. And she says, I'm leaving. And I told the manager uh, that he ought to hire you. You are exactly what the organization needs. Who knew? I didn't know but I tell you the whispers. So fast forward 15 years later, I'm still there and doing my thing. And a woman comes to me and says, Tamara, you're the best coach that I've ever seen. Does the organization know? What do you think I said? I said, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I am, okay, all right, that's great. I didn't know. And she says, yes, go get certified. I can see where you're going, go get certified. I said, okay, I'm gonna do that. That's right after I got my degree from Thomas Edison <laughs> at the time, State College, right? I'm like, why am I doing project management? I really wanna do HR and I don't know what I'm doing. Listen. It might seem far-fetched, but if you know that's still something that you might, might want to do, do it. Jump in. Jump into that unknown. Grow yourself to know yourself. I don't mean to over-educate yourself, right? Because we can get into the books and we can be so educated that we don't really, we just do it because other people are doing it, 
education is an amazing thing. But grow yourself to know yourself. This is a pivotal thing for me that I want to share with all of you. When you know yourself, you can lean into and get connected to people in ways that you might not necessarily know that you have an ability to do. It doesn't mean that you lose your authenticity at all. It's like, okay, I, I see what she needs. Let me lean in a little bit more. It might pain me a little bit, but I grow when I do that. So up in the upper right-hand corner, that energetic self-perception chart, it's, a, it's, an, a, it's, a, it's an assessment that allows for you to know what your energy is and to be able to harness the leadership abilities that you have for yourself. And it allows you to be able to pinpoint what things I might have to change in here in order to get a different result out there. Everything that you need is in here, all right? And all these other things are also, I'm sure you might know DISC and MBTI and strength finders and brain styles. These are all ways of understanding and knowing yourself. Know yourself because sometimes, most of, well, not all the time, but we, we do a pretty good job of getting in our own way. <laughs> I I said it. I know. We do. And we want to we want to justify, but I was mad. I was this. I was that. And I'm like, well, what, what that is that getting us anywhere? Don't we want to win? If we both want to win, we might want to know what are we doing to contribute to that, right? All right. Thank you. Trust your process. Trust your process. Um, on top of discovering for you the outward appearance of it happening is also going to be yours. And if you're anything like me, you will try to do it other people's way and, and look all kinds of crazy doing it. Right. You're like, why are you doing it that way? I don't know. She's doing it that way. I'm supposed to do it that way. Right. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Right. Trust your process. Every butterfly is beautiful. Every butterfly starts the same way. Every butterfly has to break out of that cocoon in its own time. And every butterfly is beautiful. And so are you. Each and every one of you have something within you that is special. So if you are already you, why? Why am I trying to be you? Hey, right? Yeah, but you have to trust it. You have to trust it. So what comes with trust when you have to trust your process? What comes... What comes up for you when you have to trust your own process? Yeah. You need to shed your insecurities. Ha ha. Shed your insecurities. You got to be naked in the square, right? You got to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to, you know, shed other people's expectations of you. Or the lack thereof. Yeah, absolutely. Anything coming up in the chat? No? Not so far? You must be brave. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, yes. Turn up some other kind of something that takes the place of the very human experience of flight. Yeah, you're doing something different. It's like, oh, I want the comfort of comfort. <laughs> 
And it's like, well, you can't be comfortable and doing something different at the same time, right? And so how about preparing yourself to not sabotage yourself, right? And there's ways of doing that. The way I do it is I tell someone that I know and love, I'm about to do something. And they're like, okay, I'm glad you told me. <laughs> and I did that on purpose, right? Because I'm not, you're not going to let me. You are not going to let me do it. So I'll, I'll say I'm going to do it. And I'm over here shaking. And you might say, Tamara, what are you doing? Like, I'm getting to it. Procrastination, blah, blah, blah. Tamara, what are you doing? I'm getting to it. And you do it. And then there's the next thing to do. What's that, what's that Eden? Um, you also have to sit with the uncertainty because when you're doing a thing and you're not quite sure and you haven't seen it done before, mm -hmm. you have to sit with the fact that you're not going to know right. and just keep moving. That's right. Doing it afraid. Sit with that uncertainty. Valley. And, you know, when we're in that uncertain place, we're not really on ground floor. We might think we're still down there, but we're like halfway up the mountain and don't even know it, right? I've seen this, this uh, animation of a man digging underground. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, he's digging underground and he's looking for gold and he gives up and stops. And in the picture is like this little bit more and the gold is right there. Like we don't know because it's uncertain that we're right there. But that means we have to persevere. We have to keep going. We have to keep moving. We have to lean on the person that I'm trusting to not allow me to let it go. That's how I live my life, really. Afraid, just scared. <laughs> just this morning, I sent an email. I'm like, oh my God. And my coach buddies were like, Tamara, you're on fire. And I'm like, oh my God, I sent the email. <laughs> You got to laugh at yourself, but you know what? You know, empty mouths don't get fed. You can't want something without doing something. Yeah. All right. So when that uncertainty comes, developing that faith muscle will help you create that journey that's unique for yourself. And I love this quote, fear and faith has something in common. They both ask us to believe in something we cannot see. This is a daily walk for me, daily. You know, it's a daily walk. <laughs> you know, when you just, not that I decide, my husband, God bless him. He actually, you know, after Gail Lehman says, Tamara, you would be an amazing coach. I'm in the organization and I'm coaching and I'm doing all these wonderful things and I'm primed for, the, for an amazing job opportunity and I didn't get it. Went from mountaintop to, yeah, I was in a, I was in a funk, it was not good. And um, I stayed on a little while longer and then decided in 2015, I don't want to commute to New York anymore. I'm going to do something different. And my husband was the one that whispered in my ear. He said, Tamara, you can do that. You'd be great at it. You've been doing it. I was like, you think I can do that? He's like, no, 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 yeah, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, okay. And I said, well, you know what? If it doesn't, I give myself about two and a half years. I don't want to spend all my money, but... Two and a half years, if it doesn't work out, I'll go get a full-time job and just keep doing it. I'm in year seven. Yeah, still, still scared, <laughs> but more confident, right? Because now I'm, I'm able to embrace this thing, know that it's not real. It's not as real as we think it is. And even if we can make up the worst thing ever, most of the time that doesn't come true either. Strengthen that faith muscle. It makes fear smaller when you're able to do that. We got an observation, Edith? Oh, yes. Um, from Anne, 
She says, I think that you have to pledge to yourself that you deserve and therefore must persevere. I heard from a family member, how do you recover from whatever? And I say, what choice do I have if I deserve? Get up, dust off and do it again. Maybe differently, but do it again. Mm. And then woohoo, go Tamara. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for that insight. Dust yourself off. Dust yourself off. Don't worry about it. This is your journey. Who, who You were supposed to get dirty in the first place, right? That's one of the things that I've all, I, you know, I've talked to a few people in the last couple of weeks and we talk about how did we get there? How did we get to where we are? And it's often through these things that we don't plan for. And this happens. This is how I handled it. This person stepped in and all of a sudden, well, it's not all of a sudden. Of course not. That was what it was supposed to be in the first place. Yeah. Now you got to trust yourself. You all were looking at my notes. You have to trust yourself. Let your intuition be your guide, right? You, you're what you've been looking for. We're looking for ourselves to be everybody else. But deep inside here, you know who you're supposed to be. You are the person you've been looking for. When I discovered that, I was done. I was done. I didn't do it in a traditional way. I did it in a way that scared me half to death. Even the fact that I'm in this area, it didn't make sense at the time. I told my mom, I graduated, got home, got a, actually a, a, an associate's degree after my bachelor's degree because mommy wanted to go back to school. She was a typing teacher and I told her computers are about to take it over. And she says, go back to school with me. I'm like, yes. Then you just tell your mother, yes, yes, yes. Okay, mommy. So we go to Camden County College and we get a associate's degree in computer science. And after that, made some moves. And I said, mommy, I got to move to the middle of New Jersey. She said, why? I'm, I'm originally from Camden. And I said, I don't know, but I can't get to New York from here. And she's like, I don't understand. She says, well, where's the job opportunity? I said, I don't know. And she's looking at me like, I don't really know what's going on. But you know, and she was a she was an amazing mom. She was like, okay. I said, but mommy, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can come back home, right? She says, yes. 2000, I moved to this area, doing my thing, commuting back and forth to Philadelphia. And in 2005, the opportunity to go to New York. 2006, I meet my then husband or boyfriend, who, I mean, I wouldn't have met him. It, there, it had to happen the way it happened. Hmm? It was necessary, but I had to get out of my comfort zone. I didn't know anybody up here. I knew no one. My mother said, who do you know? I said, she said, my quiet child is gonna move to a place and she doesn't know for an opportunity that doesn't exist. I said, yeah, that's the size of it. Here I am. Right. And, 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 you know, everybody has their own time to jump, right? For me, what I needed to have, really, really have, I just had to had, have some kind of stability. So I squirrel away. My, I, I saved money. And I said, I just want to squirrel it away. You know, when I was making my New York salary, it was like, I don't even see it. And if I feel like I have that to help me, then my belief in myself because I know from looking at past experiences, anything that I have ever tried to do, I'm going to muscle my way through it. I'm going to work my way through it. I'm going to cry my way through it. It's, going, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty, okay? But you see me finished. You see the finished product. You don't see all of that other stuff. But those girls who were, have their arms around me, they saw it because I was calling them. And I, but, but, but you don't understand. You're like, no, you're going back and you're going to do it. Right. And so it really does matter who you have around you to help fill in those gaps. Right. Yeah, definitely. Number five, speak up for yourself. No one, 
speaks for you. No one has you as their best interests other than you. And this plays a part at work, at home, at play, in anything and everything that you do. Don't let someone else tell your story. Speak up for yourself. Again, I know quiet child, you don't believe me, but I had to learn how to elevate my thoughts. And most, and you know, when I think about why I built my organization is so to give people who often feel like they're not even seen the ability to help themselves be heard. Because we know what it feels like when you're not heard. That's not, that's not a good feeling. But you can't be heard if you don't open up your mouth and speak. And so part of it is figuring that out. Sometimes you're going to blurt it out. You're like, oh my God, did I just say that? But the cat's out the bag now. You said it. Now let's go do something about it. Okay. All right. Next slide. All right. So Brene Brown is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite people in the world. And this is something that I have sitting up on my wall because I have to remind myself every day, you can either walk inside your story and own it, or you can stand outside your story and hustle for your worthiness. Own your stories, ladies. Own your story. The more you are for you, the more you're gonna be for everybody else, for the organization you work for, for the families that you're a part of, for the associations and the, the soccer teams and the whatever it is that we do. The more you own your own story, the better the rest of the world is going to be. Right? So we're going to do a little exercise. I think everybody, if you haven't in the room picked up a sheet of paper in the front of the, and from the back. I wanna do a little exercise to help to give you all a little bit of a map, a roadmap. So folks on the, on the um, other end of the camera, <laughs> I believe you all have the, the PDF. While y'all are doing what you're doing, I'm a fan of, of affirmations. I always believe that the card that you pick is meant for you. Is the message you needed to receive? And it's another little something to keep you going. Yep. So what y'all think about your card? <laughs> She's like, ah. Yes? It's about pizza? Hi, hey. Pizza's good, unless you're on a carb, no carb diet. <laughs> or it's a cheat day. That's my husband and I love it. Oh, is it cheat day yet? I'm like, yes, let's do cheat day. Let's do cheat day. We can't eat like we used to. It's up to you. If you want to share, you can. If you don't, it's okay. Sometimes people are very protective of their cards. If you want to share, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> My card says, just remember, you can do anything you set your mind to, but it takes action, perseverance, and facing your fears. It's by Gillian Anderson. And I said it was confirmation because I was having a conversation with Tamara before mm -hmm. about my future plans. And I was like, wow, this is confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They are all set? I will share. Okay. Okay, everybody, mine is try your hardest to be confident in who you are. You are enough. You are beautiful. You have to be the hero of your own life. And like Lorraine was saying, um, this is kind of self-fulfilling prophecy for me. Um, I was just saying to somebody uh, yesterday, I used to weigh 300 pounds. I don't anymore. I saved myself. 
So I've always thought that I was my own hero. That is beautiful. Ooh, that gives you chills, yes? All right, so can we go to the next slide? Okay, so on your piece of paper, I'd like for you to write down, starting on the far left, three things you want most out of life. Don't overthink this. You all know what the answer to these questions are. The three things you want most out of your life. Write them down. One, two, three. The three things you want most out of life. If you're finished with that, go to the three things I want to experience in my lifetime. What experiences do you want to have in your lifetime? I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to, I don't know. That's what I would love to do. I'm going to travel the world. Three things you want to experience in your lifetime. The next column, three things that makes you unique. Don't overthink this. It's the easy stuff that you think is, oh, that's just me. That's what makes you unique. <laughs> Might have a giving heart. Three things that makes you unique. And last but certainly not least, three improvements you want to make. So you want to state it in a positive way, right? You want to do it in a form of an affirmation, I am. Three improvements you want to make. Right. I am fearless. I am powerful. I am three improvements you want to make in your life. Okay. So if you're if you're done, what I'd like for you to do is circle one of those items in each of the columns that you have. So circle one thing in the first column, circle one thing in the next column, circle one thing in the unique column, maybe that just stands out to you, and one thing in the improvements column. Okay, everybody with me? I know I'm going pretty fast. All right. So Lorraine, not Lorraine, I'm sorry. I'm talking, looking at you and I'm looking, <laughs> I'm talking to you and I'm here. Yes, advance the slide, please. Okay. So um, down at the bottom, next to I am, write the statement that you circled in the fourth column. So I am, whatever you circled in the column number four, right there. Whatever you circled in column number three goes next in the using my. Whatever you circled in column number two, I'm getting some giggles, <laughs> uh, goes next to to accomplish what? Whatever you have circled in column number two. Absolutely. I know it's going to sound a little crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just moving. You, you're overthinking this thing. Stop overthinking. Why is she overthinking? Uh-huh. I see you. Overthinker. So I am. So I am goes the whatever the answer to number four that goes in the I am. So the second statement is the answer to number three. You write the answer to number three in the second one, right? You got it. Using my is number two. 
And then what else was the last one? And in doing so, also achieve whatever you, you circled for number one. <laughs> uh oh. So, four. Mm -hmm. And then the response to the second part of the sentence is coming from number three. So you talk about a unique path to getting somewhere and doing something. All right. So how's that sit with you? <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, no, I got you. All right. So the answer to number one starts with number four. It's almost backwards. Yep, I am. So it starts with. So maybe yours is I want to, I want to, I, I, I trust me. So affirmatively, it is you already trust me. As if you're already. So how's everybody feeling about their statement? You might have to, you know, get the get the grammar right because it might be a little crazy. But you know, you get the gist of it. This is your path. This all came from you. I didn't, I didn't tell you what it's going to be for you or you, right? It's your path. So I'm open for questions. I know we're almost at the end, but um, I'm hoping that through the stories and through the interactions that you are empowered and feeling like you can do whatever it is you need and knowing that you are unique and the way that you're doing it is right for you. And we're waiting for you to be your best self. We're waiting for you to do that. Thank you. So I'll take questions, of course, if anyone has any questions. Sorry. Hi, everybody. I'm borrowing Lorraine's microphone. Uh, if anybody in the room has questions, please press the red button, speak into the mic so that everybody here can hear. Um, and then Edith, please uh, feel free to speak up if you are getting questions in the chat. Um, Will do. Lorraine, maybe since you're sitting here by the mic, you can monitor Q&A in the room and okay. I'll be up front if you need help. Okay. Ooh, and I like your cactus picture, by the way, on your car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Uh, I've been struggling with trying to figure out what I want to do because I know I'm, I'm like I said I have 26 years in state government I'm ready to move on to my next chapter and I always hear people say you just have to find your purpose and walk in it mm -hmm. and I'm always like well what is my purpose yeah. you, know, you know what your purpose is Lorraine mm -hmm. but I just feel like I don't know what my purpose is yeah, so that's a great question. Um, finding your purpose and trying to figure it out. One of the things I, I've done with people, um, you know, sometimes people work with other people to help to, to really hone it. Uh, but one thing that I've done is to ask yourself why five times. And, and it will, man, it'll have you doing the ugly cry. So I'm just preparing you. So you say you want to do X, ask yourself why, write that down. So why, why is that important to you? Write that down. Why, why is that then important to you? 
that's how I got to a place of understanding that my purpose is really helping mostly women find their voice. It is? Okay. I might have learned it here. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's what I got my degree in. <laughs> MSM with a project management specialty, right? But that, it, you got to ask yourself why. Yeah, you got if you continue to ask yourself why, it gets to something that is so deep in you that you don't realize that this is the thing. And usually it's going to be something that spurs you to do it, even when you're talking yourself out of it. Right? It is, you know, I, I my mother lived a full life. She lived an amazing life. I always wanted her to do more. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, but mommy, please, right? But I always wanted her to do more because I knew she had more. And and I was finding myself starting to, you know, get really insular with my dreams because I didn't think that there was a container for me. Well, there is no container for me. So I had to scare myself half to death by saying, I'm going to go do something about it. This is not easy work. As um, Edith said on the other side, it's brave work. But when you get down to the why, why, that's going to get you up in the morning like nothing else. Yeah, try that. Yep. Tamara, that was an amazing presentation. And from talking to you and being around you, I, you know, I've I've been interacting with you since July as we've tried to put this program together. I never would have guessed that you are a quiet person <laughs> and that you are an introvert. The first thing I asked you was, oh, what's that behind you? And you were telling me about your sororities and stuff like that. Right. So my question is, how does a quiet person project themselves in social situations? And also, then what do you do to take care of yourself to get what you need from being a quiet person and possibly, and I don't know if you are or not, but an introvert. I'm introverted. I'm an, I'm an extroverted introvert. <laughs> so I, I, right, right, right now, I'm, I'm vibing on the energy in the room. As soon as I get home, I'll be sitting in a corner. <laughs> I just need to go sit down, right? I need quiet and I want to sit with my book and I want to watch some grass grow, right? So I, that's how I take care of myself. So how does a quiet person do it? Uh, for me, I just look for safety. I look for someone in the room I might know. When I go into rooms that I don't know, I always just go to the food. You can always find a conversation at the food. Yeah. <laughs> you can find a conversation at the food. I mean, honest to God, that's what I do. I, I just want to find something common with someone to help me feel safe and grounded. That's me in my naked in the square moments, right? Um, and making sure that I have what I need. So I need to go to the bathroom. I need to get some water and I need to find a place where I can go sit down. And I, once I understand that, then I can do it better. Like I was trying to do it like everybody else, tapped out, tapped out, tapped out, tapped out. People are like, well, are you coming out later? I'm like, no, I'm melting down. <laughs> you know. So I think it's practice and learning what it is that you need for yourself and doing exactly what that is. You're welcome. I think being a woman of a certain age, at some point we're like, that's it. I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. I don't care what you think. <laughs> I'm turning to my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, but I think, you know, we just claim it. That's what I need. And I'll come back and I can I can handle the rest. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, just like your stated that you're an introvert. I'm not sure if I am or I'm not, because I had moments where, where I think I am, maybe out of frustration, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't like, me personally, I don't like, if you're in the meeting, for example, if you're in the meeting, don't follow me and you don't have your head. Uh -oh. I don't like 
So that's the way you, I've been a long time ago, my time is very close. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be the day tomorrow. Okay. I had answers, I had purpose. Give me something. Okay. And what happened generally with me, they looked to me, and I hate to say this word too, but I always have to kind of fight it off that I'm all here. Mm -hmm. And that you always know what to do. I don't always know what to do. But you're very decisive in what you do. I know what I'm doing. Okay. And I know I can't just sit here for 30 or 40 minutes and sit around for people that constantly just tell me their experiences. I said, this is the problem. Okay. This is the problem. This is what we got to get to. What we're going to do. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear this. I love it. And because of that, I'm boss. So it's interesting on that slide where I talk about knowing yourself to learn, learn yourself to know yourself. Uh, DISC, have you ever done a DISC assessment? That is a tendency because it's not, we're all a whole bunch of things, but you're a more dominant personality and you want to get to the bottom line. And it's good to have bottom line kind of people around, but you still need to have the people who want to be social, right? Sometimes the dominant people have to be like, okay, we're going to hurry this along. We got two minutes for social so we can get things done, right? So that's how you lean into it. You can't take away from the social now because you need the social people. I'm just saying. But it sounds like that that's who you are. Just own it. She's she's clearly the boss. <laughs> no, just own it. But you you have to make sure that you can make sure that other people feel included and not excluded when you might be a little bit more forward. Right, so it's, I'm I'm usually like that when I'm hungry. My friends know me. If I have no sleep and hunger, I just am not nice. Hangry, hungry, whatever that. Hangry. Yes. Any other questions? Anything? Anything from anyone else in the room? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. So I found these beautiful, fabulous shoes online today. And I said, I wanted to make sure that I revealed the rest of it. So for those of us who do remember the Wizard of Oz, and I have been in rooms where people didn't know what the Wizard of Oz was, and I'm like, okay, I'm old. I'm, old. I'm senior. It's a more senior moment. But we, we, we have to get to the place where we all understand that we have it in here all along. It's in there the whole entire time. What do we have to do to bring it out of us? And that's our own personal work. I've done a lot of work with myself. I continue to do that. But the reminder is that you have the power in you. It's in there. Just let it shine. And at the on the right is my, my QR code for LinkedIn if you'd like to stay in touch with me. Um, I, I, I am very social. I just do it in snippets. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you. So as I yelled out to the room at the beginning of this, that Tamara is also one of our graduates. And I'm Meg France. I'm the director of alumni engagement. So it's so nice to meet you. And I'm so pleased to be able to present you with this little thank you. We're so grateful to have you with us today. And this has been at least from my perspective, very inspiring. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much. Who knew? I got a little bag. This is some swag, all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and um, just the gratitude that I have for, for everyone who was instrumental in bringing me here. Um, this won't be the last time you see me. I was talking to Lorraine. I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to get a job over here or something. <laughs> this is kind of nice. <laughs> so yes, yes, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara, again. Thank you for the very inspirational, the motivation, just all of it, just the encouragement. We appreciate it. I know it. I resonated with everything that you said. 
I had a lot of takeaways to take with me. I hope everyone has some takeaways. And I know I will see you again. <laughs> uh, everyone, we thank you for all coming, sharing your lunch with us. And we hope you enjoyed Tamara. And if you did, you can show that by a round of applause. <laughs> and for our um, people on the screen, thank you for sharing. And we look forward to our next event. And I thank Regina for throwing me into this position. It's my first time. I was nervous, but everyone was so helpful. I am appreciative. And again, thank you and safe travels on your journey home.